We all rely on farmers and ranchers, but farming is riskier than other businesses out there. Crop insurance helps farmers manage their risk. With crop insurance, farmers put skin in the game by paying premiums and shouldering deductibles. That keeps taxpayers from having to pick up the whole bill every time disaster strikes. Today, about 90% of U.S. farmland is insured, providing $100 billion in protection to more than 130 different kinds of crops. It's a testament to the program's success. Thank you for joining us for our AgriPulse Washington Week interview. I'm Spencer Jace, joined as always by AgriPulse Senior Editor Phil Brasher, discussing the week that was, agriculturally speaking, in Washington, D.C. And the biggest news for D.C. agricultural circles came uh, just uh, just a little bit ago. Uh, here we're recording this on a Thursday afternoon, and also on a Thursday afternoon, uh, we saw the Senate Agriculture Committee take a vote that we've been anticipating for a long time. The vote went as anticipated, but Phil, the fact that they have uh, moved these nominations of Greg Iba and Bill Norris uh, one step closer to fully confirmed USDA officials. That's a big step for the committee. It is a big step for the committee. It's a big step for them. However, there's a big asterisk next to Bill Northey, the Iowa uh, Agriculture Secretary nominated. And this is where the problem comes in. He, the intent is for him to be undersecretary for farm and conservation programs. That means the Farm Service Agency, the Risk Man Management Agency, and the Natural Resources Conservation Service, which is currently uh, re uh, under a different uh, undersecretary. And so you wonder, well, what's the problem? Uh, why can't they uh, uh, just nominate somebody for those, for those three agencies? Well, uh, Democrats have raised a, a technical question and that uh, He's actually being nominated for the the current the old, the current position as the department is currently organized, and that's different. And it's the farm programs and the foreign agricultural service. Um, and so, <laughs> and along with approving these two nominations, the committee also sent a letter to Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue saying. You know, we've got to clarify this legislatively. Um, you can't legally hold a different job than the one you're confirmed for. And uh, so they've actually asked the secretary to have Bill Northey do what he's the job he's confirmed for until they get this clarified um, uh, in statute somehow. So again, Northy and Iba, both very non-controversial yeah. nominations, both uh, widely expected to, to dance across the Senate floor, floor practically. It's just this matter of a technicality. I don't want to see Bill Northy or, or Greg <laughs> Iba dance, but yeah, that's, it, that's, that's not, not a Not in image. a literal <laughs> sense, in a, not in a literal sense. But there is one nominee from the Department of Agriculture that has uh, been catching, uh, catching quite a bit of flack up here on Capitol Hill, and that being Sam Clovis, who is uh, up nominated to be USDA's uh, chief scientist, uh, technically the under Secretary for Research, Education, and Extension. Uh, so that's uh, that's an, a nominee that has caused a little bit of uh, a little bit of gruffy up here on Capitol Hill. Uh, that was a nominee that was actually one of the earlier ones from the Department of Agriculture uh, from the Trump administration to Capitol Hill. Haven't seen any action on it. But Phil, uh, you were talking uh, with uh, Senate Ag Committee Chairman Pat Roberts. It sounds like the lack of action on that nomination might change. Uh, Chairman Roberts says he wants to move forward with the Clovis nomination, uh, specifically asked whether there could be a hearing next week, and he said that would be my hope. Uh, now, Democrats have actually have, have called Clovis unqualified. They've uh, called for his nomination to be withdrawn. And so uh, Republicans are really going to have to hang together in order to, to get Clovis approved. Uh, Roberts, uh, uh, Chairman Roberts, uh, couldn't say today whether he has the votes on the floor to get it approved, but he did certainly indicate that he plans to move forward. So speaking of things that are going on on the Senate floor, uh, we're in week two of a modified recess uh, as the House is on uh, recess this week after the Senate was on recess the week prior and the House was in Washington. And the Senate is uh, working on a budget uh, this week that Phil has a lot of implications for things that uh, obviously the budget, but also bigger, broader things such as tax reform. Right, right. Uh Republicans have to do this budget in order to provide a process, the reconciliation process, by which they can move tax cuts to the Senate uh, without any Democratic support. 
um, that will only require a simple majority. So it's critical, it's a must do, uh, must pass piece of legislation for Republicans. Uh, also say it's also important because the House version of this legislation would require $10 billion in cuts in farm bill spending. Um, and look, we've, we've talked, the, the Senate and House Agriculture Committee is going to write a new farm bill. They've already got enough problems uh, as it is trying to fund all the demands that, they, that are in front of them. And they don't want uh, the budget committees telling them uh, that they have to make cuts. The Senate version of this resolution would, does not require any cuts to the farm bill. That's the version we expect to eventually uh, be approved by the House as well. And um, so the farm bill should be okay, at least as far as, this, uh, as, far as the budget uh, is required. And then we can move on to try to figure out how to pay for everything uh, uh, that's going to be in it. So the Senate wrapping up this week with a vote-a-rama on the Senate floor on a number of uh, non-binding proposals for the budget. A lot of things going on on the Senate floor right now. And uh, another another thing we want to mention before we wrap up here was well, something that was supposed to happen in the Senate uh, this week but did not, and that being a confirmation hearing before the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee for a number of Environmental Protection Agency nominees. Uh, that hearing was held up, and uh, we're hearing that uh, that hearing was held up because of opposition within uh, the Republican caucus to one nominee in particular, uh, that being Bill Wareham, uh, who would have a position in the, in the Environmental Protection Agency with jurisdiction over the RFS. Uh, Senator Joni Ernst from Iowa uh, told me today that she uh, raised some opposition to his nominations after she wasn't totally satisfied with the answers that he gave in his confirmation hearing. And so uh, working on getting some assurances there, uh, she didn't go into specifics as to what those assurances would be. But uh, she told me she uh, raised an objection and informed the committee that uh, uh, she uh, she did not intend to support that nominee as things uh, things move forward. Uh, obviously, that's something the EPA is going to hope to change uh, because uh, that's their uh, that's their pick. That's the Trump administration's nominee for that position. So they're working to uh, get those assurances to the senator in order to get that position filled. A lot of things happened on the RFS this week. A lot of phone calls from the administrator and from the president to uh, to Iowa officials uh, seeking to reassure them that the administration stands behind its commitment to the renewable fuel standard. That of course coming as uh, EPA closes a comment period today on a notice of data availability that to many were concerned would lead to lowered volumes under the renewable fuel standard, specifically for biodiesel. And so uh, uh, Iowa kind of flexing its political muscle this week on, on Capitol Hill and really in, in the administrative wing of things as well. And so that'll be something to follow. And really the, the definitive answer there, it doesn't seem will be fully delivered until end of November when the EPA puts out uh, the next uh, the next RFS volumes. Final, but it's actually out on paper. <laughs> right, uh, that, and that's that's something Senator Ernst uh, told me is she's looking to get assurances in writing uh, that uh, that, she's, that uh, she says she'll have a copy of it that way. And so that'll be that'll be something to follow as the Environmental Protection Agency looks to finalize renewable fuel standard figures and looks to gain the commitment of Senator Ernst and other senators uh, being willing to support uh, Mr. Wareham and his nomination to work at the Environmental Protection Agency. I think that's going to do it for this week. Uh, certainly a very busy week with just for just having one chamber in town. There was a lot of uh, a lot of balls up in the air this week, but uh, that's going to do it for uh, for our coverage. Uh, we certainly appreciate you stopping by AgriPulse.com for Phil Brasher. I'm Spencer Chase. Have a good one.